A very, very good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. Some people think the best way of uh, celebrating the resurrection is to be stuck in a car somewhere in a traffic jam. You chose right today to come here to be in church. I'm just going to use the response on this pale blue coloured uh, sheets you've got where it's got Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Just open that up into the middle on the right hand top of the page there. On the first day of the week the disciples went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is and so let's raise our voices as we sing our opening hymn number 357. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. <laughs> So from your blue orders of service. The Lord be with you. And also Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to sit or kneel, we come to a time of confession. And again, if you look in the, uh, the Easter sheets that you've been given today, you will see that just under the opening we've just had, you will see the confession there. O oh, Jesus Christ, risen Saviour and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. 
Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Lift our minds above earthly things. Set them on things above. Show us your glory and your power that we may serve you gladly all our days. Amen. If you'd like to now continue on that next Easter Day prayer, which is the collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Yeah, Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter at Cornelius' house. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen at all by the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord.
positive style, life has conquered death. We proclaim him King of Kings, we lift by his name. Heaven and earth shall bow at his feet when he comes to reign. Blood has flown that cleanses from sin. The Gospel is from John 20, 1 to 18. Glory to you, O Lord. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord and she told them that he had said these things to her. Praise to you, O Christ. Easter. Easter, the greatest story ever. The most beautiful story, the most significant story ever told is the Easter story. It's the pivotal story for the whole universe. We've just heard a part of it from, Annie's, uh, from John's Gospel, Annie just read to us. Along with the greatest story, the greatest offense that the whole human race, you and I, have committed is to reject God's rule, to reject his, his rightful rule over 
our lives. The Bible calls that sin. Adam first sinned and brought death into the world. And before sin came into the world, there was no death. But evil and death and destruction won't last forever, ever. God says that one day, one day, he'll make a new and a perfect world that will last forever. Now, before we blame Adam for the mess that we're in, let me just say, we, you and I, we are no different from him whatsoever. There's no difference whatsoever. We would have done exactly the same as him. Like Adam, we also say, I'm going to do what I want to do. I know what the right thing is to do, but I'm going to do what I want to do. We say, I know you've got your plans, God, but I've got mine as well. And I'm going to do what's easy. I'm going to do what's convenient. I'm going to do what's fun and nice. I'm going to do what makes me look good. And I'm going to do what makes me popular and gets me places. And yes, God, I know. I know what you say. Don't do these things. But you know what? I'm going to do them anyway. We are no different from Adam. This is our selfishness, our pride, our rebellion, our self-centeredness. And it's, the, it's what the Bible calls our sin. It's an offense against God because we've turned our backs on him. And the Bible says we've all turned our backs on him. We've all sinned and gone our own way and this is the one common thing in the whole human race no matter from what era no matter what age you are the fact is we're all sinners and what makes the Easter story the greatest ever story is because Jesus gave up his life the greatest ever sacrifice so that we might be forgiven for the greatest of offences. Now some might be thinking, well, ah, that sounds great. So why isn't the world then a much better place than it is right now? Why is there still so much suffering and disease, disaster, famine, Killing, anger, hatred. Why? And the answer is this. Because we're living in a time of grace. Which means we're still living in a fallen world. We're fallen people. And we're flawed people. And everything around us is flawed. Nothing works as it should do. Yes, we also see beauty shining through the flaws and the blemishes hinting to us of something better but this is still a time of grace that we're in it's a time of god waiting wanting desiring for more people to come to him and to believe in him but this time of grace will not last forever For those of us who have come to God, asking for his forgiveness, we know we're still sinners. I know I'm still a sinner. We know we're still weak. I know I'm still weak. We know we still sin and let God down. I know I still sin and let God down. But we also know his peace in our hearts, in our lives. We also know we are forgiven. And this peace which we have in our hearts is a peace which passes all understanding. Why? Because we know our sins have been forgiven. When, um, when Claudia and I want to watch a film on Netflix, 
we usually go through uh, the um, checking the trailers of different films. Trailers are great. In fact, sometimes we end up watching so many trailers, we run out of time to watch a film. But the trailer isn't a replacement for the film. Trailers can be great, but the whole point of a trailer is to get you excited about the film. It's to help you look forward to this something bigger and better as and when the film is available. And as followers of Jesus, knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing his, his peace in our hearts, that's the trailer. God's ultimate solution is still to come. That's going to be something bigger and better and far more exciting. And when this grace period is over, God has promised, as I've said, he will make a new heaven and a new earth and our perfect home in eternity with him. But until then, until that time, we only get to see hints and glimpses of what's to come. I'm sure some of you have heard the story, perhaps many of you have heard the story of Johnny Erickson Tada. I've shared it before a little bit about her. She's now a woman in her 70s. She's an American. When she was a teenager, over 60 years ago, she had a tragic accident which left her paralyzed from the neck down before the accident she had no faith no interest whatsoever in God at all but after the accident over a number of years and those years were filled with all sorts of anguish anguish and, and mental, physical pain, at some points feeling suicidal. She writes about this in her book, by the way. She's written several books. Though thankfully, I have to add, assisted dying wasn't an option back then, in that day, because she says she probably would have taken it had it been. Eventually, though, she started to come to terms with what happened to her. She reassessed her whole life. And through it, eventually, she came to faith in Jesus. Praise God. She hasn't been physically healed, though she initially often cried out for it, for God to heal her. Today, she still suffers daily from excruciating pain and stiffness. She's still unable to move from the neck down. She's totally reliant on others. She lives in a wheelchair. About seven years ago, she said this. She said, I know it sounds incredible, but I really would rather be in this wheelchair knowing Jesus as I do, knowing his peace, knowing I'm forgiven, than out and about walking on my feet without knowing him. I'm so happy in Jesus, and so I thank God every day for my wheelchair. And Journey goes on to say she looks forward to eternity when all of us, not just her, but all of us who believe in Jesus and trust in him will have new and perfect bodies in a new and perfect world. Let me just say this. Not every believer will experience Jesus in the same way that Johnny Erickson has come to experience it in, in her life. And neither... Can any of us put any pressure on anyone to respond in that same way 
that she's responded to her suffering and to her particular challenges. Nevertheless, Journey's testimony is a great and wonderful encouragement to all of us that Jesus uses even our pain, even the most awful consequences of our fallenness to show us his power, to show us his love in unique ways, in absolutely astonishing ways. And just one more thing to say, leading on from that, about the cross. The cross tells us that the biggest need of the human race is forgiveness. Our biggest need is not relief from suffering, it's forgiveness. It's for the human heart to know that it's been forgiven, to be forgiven of our sins. That is the number one biggest need. When Peter finishes his, his first ever sermon to the first ever congregation, he says to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Baptism is the, is the outward visible sign of the inward invisible reality of our sins forgiven. And that's what defines the church, that's what defines every single Christian. It is the forgiveness of our sins. A little later on when Peter speaks to Cornelius, David read, read that reading out for us, he speaks to the first Gentile church. He says the same thing. In that last verse he says, All the prophets testify that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our biggest need is the forgiveness of our sins. Now when I'm saying that, I'm not diminishing the very real burdens that we bear that people bear in their lives, they're significant, of course they are. And it's right for us as the church, as Christians, to, to pray and support and come alongside those who suffer in any sort of way. Those who have painful, lifelong conditions. Those with, with terminal illness. Those who are bereaved, those who are, who are anxious, have mental health issues, are tired etc 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 but but the comfort all of us primarily need is the comfort of knowing that our sins are forgiven we don't offer false comfort the forgiveness of sins is the foundation on which we find comfort in all other trials it gives us peace which nothing can ever take away. If God was willing to send his son to die so that I could be forgiven, then I can trust in him to be with me and to help me with all my other needs as well whatever they might be. We Christians, the church, we have a, a life-transforming message for the world. We have the gospel. It's a death-defying hope. And it's all-encompassing. It changes everything about, we about how we live, the way we face life, the way we die. Everything is changed. It's the greatest news ever. It's the best news ever. It's the, it's the whole world needs to hear this news. So, what to do? What shall we do as followers of Jesus? Well, this Easter time, let's allow that story, let's allow 
this gospel, wonderful message of Easter. Let's, let's allow this story to impact our lives afresh. The experience of God's love, the Father's love, the experience of his loving arms around you. As he runs out to us, he runs out to us. So eager is he to forgive us. And he welcomes us home to be there with him forever. Let's allow this wonderful, amazing story to impact us afresh today and every single day. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank and praise you for the Easter story. We thank and praise you for the cross and for the resurrection. We thank and praise you that when we believe and trust in you, you forgive us our sins. Thank you, Lord, that your forgiveness changes everything. Even our hurts and pains take on a different meaning. Lord, fill our lives. Lord Jesus, fill our lives with your loving purposes. Guide us and show us how we can serve you and witness to you as we rejoice and share in this amazing and wonderful message of the Easter story. And we pray all these things in your wonderful, precious and mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Robert. We have an opportunity to respond to that message now in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you will find on the grey insert sheet um, with your orders of service this morning. So if you're able, please stand and we can declare our belief in our God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's bow our heads, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, this Easter morning announces to the world that you are alive. It proclaims to the world that nothing can separate us from your love. And in our prayers now, we join together with countless numbers in heaven and on earth who proclaim your victory. Risen Lord Jesus, fulfill your work on earth through your people, through your church, 
through all those whom you call. Risen Lord Jesus, Saviour, Redeemer, on this Easter day, we praise you and we adore you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our families and for our friends and for our community, for our neighbours, our colleagues, our acquaintances. We pray for people and peoples we know and think about overseas. Lord God, renew our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may realise our partnership with you in meeting the needs of the world with the power of Jesus' death and resurrection. Lord Jesus, on the cross, you brought good out of evil. And this morning, we especially pray that you will bring good out of evil, especially in those places where your people today have to hide their faith for fear and persecution and for their love of you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we bring before you the elderly, the frail, the sick, the dying, and the suffering. Lord God, please draw near to them as they draw near to you especially strengthen and be with those who are caring for a loved one at home. And in a moment of quietness, let's now hold before God all those who especially need our prayers today. Lord God, for all those that we have held and mentioned before you, shine your light into their lives. Reveal your love to them in Jesus and grant them your peace and wholeness as you bring them to that place of believing and trusting in you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And finally, I pray the words of a hymn that we're going to sing very shortly. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, on this Easter day, fill our souls with praise and worship, with awe and adoration for how great you are, how great you are. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace and the blessing of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all now at this Easter time and forevermore. Amen. Wow. <laughs> so from the back of your Easter sheets, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.